Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play uh, Jump Superstars and yeah I have been lazy over this past weekend and I didn't feel like recording this because uh, I had to drive all the way back home to go to the doctors. Anyway it turns out that we got one more stage to complete out here in the desert. And we're going to be doing a series that we haven't actually even, like, heard of or seen before. But I think you might have noticed them when we used them in one of our decks earlier. Anyway, I modified our first deck. So you guys can, like, see, like, what I'm going to be using. Also, there's going to be, like, all this, like, Japanese text still, like, on this little manga page. I don't even know what this 200 means. Like, I'm going to recap on, like, this whole story at the end of the game, like... Because I know it's just a big excuse plot, but you know what, I know there's like a translator guide out there, and I know you guys want to know what that says, because I sure as heck do. Anyway, this new deck pretty much uses Yusuke, and like his best and only good like coma, and that's coma 6. Um, coma 4, he doesn't even does his signature spirit gun, so that's why I don't really all that like it that much. Anyway, this, uh, this part right here was just pretty simple, like all you gotta do is like beat these guys up. I think you gotta beat up the second player, I think. But the point is that you just just kill everyone because I mean, like, what? Well, I mean, this is a fighting game. That's all you do. Oh, anything else I could talk about? Um, hmm. uh, school is a bitch, and uh, I've been watching Rosary Vampire, and that really, really needs an abridged series. And yep, that's all we gotta do is kill freaking Shaman King guy. Shaman Kingu! <laughs> I'm stupid. I've been watching a lot of Classic Gaming Room, which is uh, by Incom Company. Anyway, on to our hidden location, which is out here in the desert. Anyway, this stage is going to be pretty simple. All you got to do is complete it with 50% of health and do it within a decent time limit. Anyway, I'm going to use the deck that I did not just create. I'll just use Sports Spirits because, I mean, it was just a simple mission. Just kill everyone. Everyone you see. Matter of fact, knock people out if you can. I'm sorry, like, I'm recording this, like, at a bad pace. Uh, let me change my pace. Uh, long ago, you guys, uh, there was this one manga, I don't know if you guys ever freaking heard of it, but it's called Soul Eater. I love that manga, it is so good. And, like, um, I don't know if it's just me, or, uh, just, like, or Japan, but it seems like they have, like, got more into, like, the Halloween monster, American monster kind of vibe, you know? Because, I mean, they got their own uh, yokai, as they like to call it, which is demon over there. But basically, now they're putting, like, more, like, vampires and freaking, uh, I don't know, just, like, more, like, western. Not western. Yeah, more western lore to their monsters now instead of just having uh, English ones. I don't know. I just, I just wanted to point the, some of these things out. Like, if you look at Inuyasha, like, you wouldn't know what any of those demons are. But, like, the, she, the Mistress Centipede in the first episode, she was a, a legit character, like, a, or a legit, like, myth. Like, they believed in, like, a human centipede. <laughs> human centipede. Anyway, uh, now we get to finally do this random ass freaking anime that I don't know shit about. Look at that slowdown, it's so delicious. I want to eat it for lunch. Anyway, I think my mic is, like, going to be really buzzing. Anyway, our objective is to clear the stage. Don't get hit by combos. Kill them with only combos and knock them out three times. Or actually just kill them three times. This is a simple stage. I'm just going to use Yu Hawk Show again. Anyway, this is an anime series that is also a big fan dub. Not a fan dub, but a big gag up. And it's called P.O. Fuki J Jaguar. I don't, I don't know. Payo to fu, Fuku Jagger. Yeah, it's Japanese as shit. I don't know fuck about it. The thing is, I've read the first volume of Payo Puke J Jaguar. I don't know. Jaguar. I'll just call it Jaguar. But basically, Jaguar, that's the guy that we're fighting. He is a flautist, a really kick ass flautist. Uh, like, whenever he plays this flute, like, he can make it sound like different instruments. Matter of fact, he is just, he just knows how to do every single instrument. So look, he can just, like, play, like, those little sticks and get all of himself back. Too bad we're just gonna kick his ass. Anyway, 
um, the series, well, from where I've read from it, um, it has this one little guy, I have no, what the, I don't, I don't got no idea, I'll just call him the straight man, and he's basically trying to get into different, uh, record companies and different schools and whatnot with his music. The problem is, every time he starts doing that, he gets sidetracked by, uh, Jaguar, who just comes out of nowhere and does dumb shit. You know, that standard, like, I don't know, Japanese rule that, like, the main character can't get what they want because, like, you got the idiot, stupid character who's always ruining things. Yeah, that, it pretty much follows that. And, um, eventually he does, well, from what I've read on Wikipedia, eventually he does get accepted into a school because, like, the first mm, volume I read, like, it was just all about gags about every single school he's just getting rejected out of. Either he got rejected or he missed his meeting, something like that, because of Jaguar and his amazing flute-playing ability. Anyway, he eventually lands in the same dorm room and classroom as Jaguar. Basically, Jaguar is his teacher and his dorm mate. I, I don't, I don't get how that works. Anyway, uh, P.U.K. Fuku Jaguar. It's a pretty weird series. It's just a gag series, so you can come in at any time if you want to read that, because it's just episodic plots and no overall plots, you know. Oh man. I like cake. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to rev up to the next uh, little series we're about to do. Yeah, I know. We're not beating the game just yet. I should have really up like loaded this like over the weekend, man. This would have made a lot more sense. I'm sorry, you guys. <sighs> it's like midnight where I'm at. Anyway, it turns out we can go back to the gla yeah. grasslands now that we beat what's his face. Pukio, Fuyuku, Jaguar, Dookie Duke. I don't know. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Jaguar, that's my name. Anyway, I'm just going to use the one deck and we get this uh, Japanese text again. Grr, I'm going to play with my auto tune. I like to eat bacon at 12 o'clock in the morning. I like to eat it when nobody's up to make me uh, groaning. Yeah, bitch. I don't know. Uh, I've been feeling like playing uh, Mario Party lately. Uh, let me talk more anime shit. Um, anime, 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 anime. Uh, Something, something, something. I need to go to a... Uh, how many of you guys have ever been to a con convention before? I mean, I think that should be, like, the question of the day, but... Thing is, man, uh, well, like, an anime convention, a video game convention, any type. So, if you guys have been to a convention before, like, I don't know, a video game, anime, comic book, any type of convention. It just has to be, like, some type of nerd type of convention, basically, where you can see nerds. <laughs> Uh, leave it in the comments of which ones you've been to because I have been in the mood to go to a con and I wish I can go to Comic Con this summer, but eh. I want to go to Screw Attack Con out in Texas because I might be out there over the summer, but yeah, I'm not going to be in uh, Los Angeles. I was in Los Angeles too during Comic Con like back in 2008, but that was before I even gave a shit. Anyway, finally we get to do one of my favorite animes. And, uh, this is pretty simple. Just clear the stage with three KOs. Don't switch to battle characters fewer than five times. And clear it without being KO'd. Or, right, wait, I think I said that. Kill him more than three times and knock him out. Damn. I'm gonna use the Naruto deck. Anyway, this is one of the greatest successes of all times through the Meiji era. And that is known as Roroni Kenshin. Well, not the greatest successor, but he's known as Roroni Batosai. Hatakiri Potosai. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Roroni Kenshin. Yes, I love this series. It's about uh, a manslayer, as they were once called him, as he used to fight in a war for a certain side. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. And basically, after the war was over, he vowed to never kill again, so he adopted a new sword known as a reverse blade sword. So basically the blade is on the opposite side. So Kenshin became a wanderer. 
or Hiroki Potosai, but he just goes by his normal name now because then he doesn't want to be known as the Manslayer. Anyway, so as soon as he like gets around on the road, he travels around, whatnot. His wife or his first wife died. You don't you don't learn that in the manga, or maybe you do. I don't know. I just learned that from Samurai X, which is like the OAV or what the OAV titles are known. Anyway, I got to get back to the plot. Uh, freaking, uh, he meets a woman named Karu, uh, Karu Kamiya, and basically she's just running a dojo, she lost all of her students, and then he just ended up mooching off of her. <laughs> I know that kind of sounds like a little bit, like, just, like, dry, the way I'm saying it, but I mean, that's what it kind of became into. And after that, they rescued a little boy named Yaiko, and he, like, is being taught under, uh, Karu of, uh, samurai training. Then they meet Sanosuke, who has a giant freaking sword in street fights. And then he gets his ass kicked by Chikenshin, and he becomes best friends. Because that's how it always works here in the freaking anime world. And pretty much, like, it just follows their adventures as, like, he redeems himself about all the past mistakes Kenshin has made by making all these enemies with all these people. Even, um, uh, the original Batosai fights him at one point. And some even like Japanese generals, but basically I got a whole episode to talk about this because we're going to another freaking level. Just uh, just just for freaking Ronin Kenshin, like that's how good it was. Anyway, that's pretty much the plot. Um, I love freaking Ronin Kenshin because basically all the characters in that like it's like a realistic plot with realistic characters. There's no like face faults and just dumb characters who just do things that just like you, you question or something no it's it, you can like actually like buy into these characters they, they could do like a live action movie of Roni Kenshin like it, it, there's no like science fiction in it neither because uh I forgot I think his name was Tari whatever the fuck his name is basically the guy who's done Roni Kenshin oh yeah this mission blah 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 kill uh destroy all the damn drums I don't care yeah destroy 15 drums I don't even know the freaking objections. I don't even read them. Anyway, uh, but, 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 but he said that uh, the guy who said like he w likes to make realistic stories and he hates when they make uh, swords uh, shoot things out of them because that kind of reduces the need for a sword because it's a close combat type of thing. If you want to shoot somebody, use a gun. But I digress. Roni Kenshin. Um, over here, it was released over here on Toonami, like every other good anime, which might be coming back, actually, because, like, they had, like, a little prank on, uh, freaking April Fool's Day bringing it back, and they did a good job fooling me, because I would have bought it. Um, I didn't watch none of it, though. I just, I just seen, like, some of the, uh, like, stuff on Twitter. I watched, well, I turned on the TV, and I looked, and I was like, oh my gosh, it was really there, but I didn't really care, because I don't really watch TV anymore. But, anyway, Roni Kenshin, uh, it ran for, mm, I think, ever since 1998 to, like, 2000 or something. 27 volumes, I'm betting. Anyway, uh, within that time, actually, uh, that was around the time I actually got into the series, that and, um, Inuyasha. And I prefer to watch this series because I found, like, Kenshin's, like, like, English, like, the anime, like, the anime versus the uh, manga, they're both on point. And that's what I like in different animes and mangas, like Rama One Half. That's like my favorite series of all time because both the manga is good and the anime is good. So, uh, the freaking voice acting is just amazing. I don't know what's the guy name who does Kenshin's voice, but basically he just, he Yoda speaks for Kenshin. Like, he would like say, like, this is not a good idea. No, it is not. We must fight, or some shit. Anyway, basically, like, he just, like, re rearranges his speech, and it, like, it works. Like, I don't know how, but, like, you think it would just come off as really corny. Also, it's, like, it's this type of series that it establishes that, like, like, Kenshin's already a damn badass. There's no really huge training montages until he goes to Kyoto, which is, like, the major arc of the whole series, which you could, you could just read the first... Uh, 18 volumes of Veroni Kenshin and like just be like satisfied after that because I don't like the final arc. It's kind of it's too drama-ish and like not as much happens. Actually, a lot does happen. It's just eh, just read the first 18 volumes because that's what I did, and then the rest I just like read online. And they didn't um actually finish the uh, actual series in um Japan. Like they didn't finish the anime series. 
However, they did uh, ha add it on to the manga's ending by having the, uh, what's that thing called? The OAVs, they like added on so Kenshin could die. Spoilers, I don't care. But the creator says that that's not canon, so I, I don't care if it is a spoiler. But yeah, in the OAVs, they made Kenshin die, even though after like all the bullshit kind of died down and he had a kid and a wife and... Yeah, I love Ronnie Kenshin. I, I I don't know like how else I can just keep on describing the show. Just like every time like uh like something bad is like gonna happen to a main character, like you you begin to care about this character. Uh, even like this character that you're seeing, like he's coming out and he's like stabbing us and crap. Uh, and he's in all black. Hideo Sajime, I think that's that's his name. He's like a real person. Like he actually takes themes from real actual like history of Japan and he said he was terrible at history the creator anyway basically like you actually begin to care about him and he's like a bad guy at first Hadi Sajimo or whatever I just pronounced his name just backwards right there but basically every single character in the show is just like, it makes sense uh, just uh, g give Freaker Roroni Kenshin a read for me because like I love this series and I think it's one of the best series in all of Shonen Jump even better than Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is up there, but like it, it doesn't have that that just like it doesn't go as deep as Rurouni Kenshin does. Like I actually enjoyed this, and I actually like when Borders was going out of business. I got like the whole collection like of like the triple binders, anyway, or the triple uh, triple manga volumes, anyway. We only got uh, we're going back to the battlefield next time, so I'll be seeing you guys.